Happy Monday. I am in my very favorite space with one of my very favorite team members behind the camera. And we are doing this pretty regularly because I've become obsessed with video, something I never thought I was going to say because I always felt like you're not there. But I know you are, and I know that you are watching and listening because you're telling me that you are, and I trust that that's true. So I love nothing more than your thoughts and your ideas and your pushback, your comments, your shares. That all means a lot to me. If I talk to 10 people, to me, it feels like I've talked to a million because I love connection, I love engagement. And one of the things that uh, this year has been particularly important for me as a business owner, as a leader in my community and in my company, is the idea that every single thing that is happening in my life, to me, around me, to the people that I love, can be used for good. That this thought of business being an expression of who we are and that we can do good work has really been solidified, particularly in 2020. 2020 has been a wild ride for all of us. And I've never been around people who all have had the same experience differently. And I think that's what's happened in 2020. We are all having the same experience differently. And it can feel like we are totally alone even though everyone is going through it. So I asked myself with my team, I've asked myself, what is it that we can do and how can we do it better next year as a result of having gone through this year? How can our work continue to be an expression of who we are and how can we continue to do good work? And how can I continue to be a catalyst of good work? internally and externally for us for my team for me for my family as well as for clients and audience members and you and one of the words that came up is a concept and a principle in business that is not new and it's the concept and the principle of streamlining now you might think that streamlining is something you do when everything is going well and you're assessing how well you're doing, you're already sailing in a particular direction, everything is going okay, and now you are just refining. And that is one way of streamlining. But the other way of streamlining is to look at what is not going well. What is that extra baggage that you have packed on? Have you, have you been able to really focus on what else is possible or have you been bogged down by all the things that are hard and challenging and all the things that could go wrong? The world doesn't have to be in a state of chaos for us to feel like we are in a state of chaos. But if the world is in a state of chaos, how much easier is it for us to slip into that mindset? And how counterintuitive does it feel for us to say, but no, I can do better. I can actually streamline. I can actually innovate from this place of difficulty and challenge. I can actually pay attention to what works for me, what works for my family, what works for my team, what works for my clients. Ask those questions, answer those questions, and then take one distinct, measurable action forward. I think of streamlining like I think of like a dolphin's back or a beautiful sailboat. It's smooth, it's sleek, it moves forward. It's on a mission. It is engaged with its purpose and actually understands its function. So in business, nothing is that smooth. In life, nothing is as smooth as a beautifully crafted sailboat. But you can ask yourself, is this in line with my mission and my purpose? Is this in line with what I said I was going to do? Or am I distracting myself? Am I buying into a mindset that's actually facilitating more bumpy rather than more smooth? 
those are some really simple ways for me to reconnect myself to what else is possible. It is so easy to be stuck. It is so easy to be disappointed with yourself when something is not working, even if it has nothing to do with yourself. Streamlining in your life, with your team, with your, with your clients, means you point out to yourself and to each other what is not working, and you find ways to actually make improvement. It's okay to be proactive um, in pointing out what we need to change. It's okay for us to practice that continually. It's okay for you to not set it and forget it, but for streamlining to be a practice. I'm big on practice because the expectation that we're all just going to get up and live our best lives is false. Rather, I think 2020 has definitely taught us that it all is in the practice, in the acknowledging what we can do better, in the grace that we have to do better, in the ability to learn from the mistakes that were made by others and by us in understanding that we as professionals don't live in a vacuum. We are interconnected and interdependent of one another. And that is the beauty of business. And that is the beauty of the opportunities we have in our economy, regardless of how we feel about it right now. So I would encourage you to really look and think about streamlining. Look up the word. Uh, familiarize yourself with it. Uh, treat it like you're learning a new language. That's my favorite thing to, to say to people because learning a new language is tough. And you have to think of the words that you use and you have to think about their meaning and how you apply them to yourself in your life because language is applied and that is how it's most, most powerful. So look it up. Familiarize yourself with it. Ask yourself, how can I streamline? Maybe it's the tiniest thing. Maybe it's about how you are engaging with your children as you're teaching from home and they're learning from home. Maybe it's about how you communicate with your team. Maybe it's how you're setting goals. Maybe it's about leaving some things behind that you've tacked onto your life that just don't no longer serve you. So think about it. Comment below. What does streamlining look like for you? I can't wait to continue to have this conversation with you, learn from you, learn with you, and streamline right along with you. Thanks for watching.